Welcome to the plug. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We're about to jump into our new Change the Channel series. Make sure you're ready to take notes. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy. As we know, man, the world is bombarded by media. We get media everywhere. I mean, you can't, it's almost impossible to go one day without no media being in your ears or your eyes or something. Media is advertisement, media is telephone, media is TV, media is Netflix, media is Instagram, media is music, all of that stuff, right? It, we're bombarded by that all the time, which means that there's a lot of information out there, but a lot of times we can be misinformed. A lot of times we can be, what we're going to be talking about today, you can be finessed. You can be finessed by the media. And when I think of somebody finessing somebody, I think of this story that I had when I was um, in church when I was younger. And so I went to a, a medium-sized church. It wasn't as big as linked up, but it was a nice-sized church. And one day, towards the end of the sermon, um, this man, uh, who was a man of God, stood up, and he said, I have a word from the Lord. And I'm like, okay, like this man just standing up, be bold, okay. And he went down front, asked the pastor for the microphone, and he started just speaking, you know, like, God is saying this and that, and pastor, you're a man of God, and blah, 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 this and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And then he started talking about, um, started bringing people up and like prophesying over them. Like, you know that you're supposed to be doing this. You need some money. Here's a Rolex watch for you. Here's some money for you. And he's just blessing people. And I'm like, yo, who is this man? Like, this is dope. About a couple months later, he's continuing to go to the church. And then he ends up telling everybody in the congregation about this investment deal where, hey, y'all, if y'all give me this money, like, I'm going to flip it. You all see how I'm living. I'm fat over here. I'm living fat. So you all come on, get in part of this investment, and then we all going to go up together. A couple weeks after that, nobody heard from this man again. He took all the money, <laughs> and he just dipped. And I was on some, as a young child, I was thinking to myself, yo, how wasn't people spiritually in tune to know that this is a jug? Like, this is a finesse. This is a con artist. How ain't people in tune to that? But a lot of the church members weren't because they were so focused on the money that their spirits ain't even, they ain't go with their spirits. I ain't going to lie, though. My pops and my uncle, they was like real hood, and they ain't really like, they grew up in the, in the streets, and they was already off rip like, yo, something's funny about this dude. Like, we ain't putting our money with him. A lot of people lost their money, but a lot of people didn't. And I'm talking about like millions of dollars, millions of dollars this man stole from the congregation. And so, um, and Proverbs 4.20 has been our main scripture that we've been talking about. It's been our main scripture. And it says this, it says, my son or daughter, give attention to my words. Incline, incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. This, is all, this scripture is just all about making sure you watch your ear gates and your eye gates. And we're going to continue down this road because this is so important. Like, I cannot stress this enough how important it is to watch what you watch and listen what you listen to. I tell y'all before, like, I think it's crazy that people are depressed listening to depressing music. Like... It don't make a, like, of course you're depressed. You're listening to depressing music. And so what we have to do is switch up the media, the content that we intake. And that's why we did our media detox. Uh, if you all was a part of that and you really pushed through, like, throw your hands in the air. I just want to see. I ain't going to lie. I did mine. I went strong. It was, a, um, it was a couple times where I was like, I deleted my apps, but I was looking for the app on my phone like, yo, where is it? Oh, snap. I'm not supposed to be doing this right now. So, like, thank you all for the ones that did do that. I'm proud of you all. If you all didn't, yo, you can, yo, what's up? We can do it again this week. Media Detox this week again. All you got to do is go sign up at the link. Can you throw that up there for me real quick? Just random. But if you want to do it this week, go ahead, jump right in. Just go to this bit.ly uh, slash Media Detox. And 
Yo, if some of you all do it, I'll do it again with you. How about that? I'll do it again if you all jump in this week. But most media content or the media that is out there, a lot of them are what we call con artists. In my opinion, I think they're con artists. They put something in front of you knowing that they have an ulterior motive behind it. They're trying to trick you to think something, and they may not even know that they're trying to trick you, but they are because the world is controlled by spirits. And there are spirits behind everything. And so we just have to figure this out. And when I look up the definition of con, I've been looking up definitions a lot. And when I look up the definition of a con artist or conned, to be conned, it means that you put your confidence in someone else. And when you put your confidence in something else besides your confidence in God, that means you can easily be finessed. And so these con artists, this guy was up there and we put, they, well not we, because I, I was in high school and I ain't even had no money to give them. But people put their money, their confidence in this man because he had a Rolex, because he was giving out cash, because he had a word from the Lord. And um, they put their confidence in him and therefore they gave him their money. Instead of putting their confidence in God and seeking him about it, they didn't seek God. Well, maybe they did. They just didn't listen. And so my thing is, has media finessed you out of your beliefs? Has media finessed you out of your hope? Has media finessed you out of the great uh, individual, the high character, moral person that you're supposed to be? Has media finessed you out of just living the lifestyle that you know you're supposed to be living? Have they finessed you out of that, finessed you into wrong desires? And so some of you all, like, I'm sure most of you all know what finesse means, but I just got, had to get an um, uh, articulate uh, definition from the dictionary. So finesse means the art of persuasion or trickery in which an individual is able to get something they want with cunning prowess or an illusionist or wizard. And so they want to just get something from you by tricking you. And y'all know them people out there. Y'all got people at your school that they finesse all the time, all the time. If you know one, just tag them right now. Just, just tag the ones that be finessing people. Now, don't do that. Um, but have you ever been finessed into something that you really didn't even want, but you thought you wanted, but you really didn't want it? You thought that you supported it, but you really didn't support it when you looked deeply into it. And I think it's almost like these Skittles, right? These sour Skittles, these sour Skittles, right? I ain't gonna lie, I like, I like sour food, sour patch kids, I ain't have none of them, or y'all know I would've used them. But these sour Skittles, right? It's packaged in a beautiful way. It's eye popping, it got the beautiful colors, taste the rainbow, you know, it's green. They look delicious. However, we don't realize what's inside, and it also tastes good. If anybody likes sour Skittles, just throw your hands up there for me real quick. The, give me a amen, give me a heart or something like that, right? It tastes good as well, but a lot of times we don't realize there's these things called ingredients. And these ingredients are a lot of times uh, have dangerous toxins inside of them, but because it's packaged up nicely, we'll take it in. Because it tastes good, we'll take it in. Because it smells good, we'll take it in. And so Sour Skittles have this thing called, like, you all should look out for this, but it's called uh, Yellow 5 Dye or Red 40 Dye. And this dye is like, it's in a lot of food. Like, majority of the food we eat, this stuff is in it. However, this stuff is not good for you. In all reality, what it does is Yellow 5, they actually find links to cancer. They show that zinc, which is vital for your body, gets taken out whenever you're taking this dye. And zinc is important for you. It's a mineral. It helps you with blood clots and all this other type of stuff. And so what we have to do is we have to really like be aware of what we're ingesting, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually. That's why he says guard your eye gates, guard your ear gates, what you let inside of you. But I think just like a lot of times we get finessed by the package of something or by how it tastes, a lot of times 
we get finessed by the media the same exact way. And it's not always just overt. It may not actually even seem bad. It's actually the same like, I know most of y'all, we from Atlanta here or you live here now. And so Lil Baby got this song out, right? Y'all probably know this song. If you know this instrumental, just like throw in. If you know this instrumental, just let me know if you know it or not, right? Just let me know if you know it. But this, um, this instrumental, um, this song right here is a very popping song. Um, and it actually has truth in it. Like this song that Lil Baby got out right now, like the bigger picture, it got a lot of truth in it, right? I mean, it got foul language as well, but it got a lot of truth in it. But just because something has truth in it doesn't mean that the whole message is truthful. Just because it has a little bit of truth doesn't mean that the whole message is truthful or it doesn't mean that you just need to be watching and listening to everything that he talks about. So I pulled out some things from this song that I think are truthful, that are very relevant, that are very powerful. And so he says a couple things in the song that are factual, like very, very factual. And one of those things is this. It says, it's bigger than black or white. And these are facts, like it is bigger than black or white. Like what we do is bigger than black or white. He says that there's a problem with the system, which there is a problem with the system because this system is not God's system. This kingdom is not God's kingdom. So of course there's gonna be something wrong with the system. He says that things ain't gonna change overnight. They are not gonna change overnight. These are facts, they are not. He says that they are crooked cops, but there's a lot of good cops as well. These are facts, this is right. He has a lot of truth. However, what is the underlying tone of this entire song? And that is what we have to really dig into. That's what we really have to watch because the subliminal message oftentimes is what is the most important. And so even as we see on this picture, right? like. As we see on this picture, what is the main thing that stands out in this pic? What's the main thing that stands out in this pic to you all? Y'all can answer in the crowd. What's the main thing that stands out? Fist, shirt, what else, what else, what else? Oh, okay, you, you, you really paying attention, Sam. The white hand right here, that's true. I, I ain't even peeped that. Yeah, went over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think one of the biggest, thank you, there we go, Monet. BLM, Black Lives Matter, is one of the main messages that is being portrayed throughout the entire, um, just the entire video. Now, let me preference this like, of course I think Black Lives Matter because I'm a black life, I clearly matter. But the statement is true. And this is the same thing with media. This is just one example, but we have to do research. But the statement is true. However, it's not so much just about the statement. It's what is they represent, which is important. What do they represent? And so I just decided to do a little research for us real quick. I just decided to do a little research just to throw this stuff out there. And these are just factual information. So I went to the website. I went to Black Lives Matter website. And um, I just was viewing around, checking stuff out, and I looked at what do they stand for. I looked at what do they stand for and what do they really believe and all of that type of stuff. And it was cool. It was cool. Like, they had some very truthful statements within that. Very truthful statements, right? It was packaged up really nicely. Packaged real nice. However... When I started to dig a little deeper and not just read, so I read the beginning, what we believe. Four years ago, we known as Black Lives Matter Network organized, uh, you know, to build local power and intervene when violence was inflicted on black communities. Hmm, that sounds good. Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. Y'all are standing up for something you believe. But as I started to go down deeper, instead of just looking at the top, because a lot of times what happens is, we just read the beginning and we don't read the whole article. We don't listen to the whole speech. We don't watch the whole clip. We just get the snippet and we think it's good. And, and if I would have read this by itself, I would have realized like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with these people. Black lives matter. I would have been right out there too. However, I started to dig deeper. 
So let's go to that next one real quick, another screenshot. So it said they started because of Trayvon Martin um, and how his uh, thing was acquitted and in search of justice, Mike Brown, and these things were good. These were good. Um, and that's when they first kind of started around Trayvon Martin's time period. So let's keep on going up. Let's keep on reading. Nothing's wrong with this at all. This is all great. Let's go to that next slide. Then it says this. Um, we are, now I'm starting to get into the meat of what they believe. We are guided by the fact that all black lives matter. True. Regardless of actual perceived sexual identity, gender identity, gender expression, economic status, ability, disability, religious beliefs, disbeliefs, immigration status, or location. Okay, that, I believe that same thing. I agree with that. All of these lives do matter. God made all of these people in their image, right? Now, now we're about to actually see what they really, what the movement is really about, though, right? What are they really pushing? There we go. What's the real agenda? So we make space for trans transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. All right? That's one of the biggest things for them. Let's keep on going up. No, no. No, no. Go up. Go up. This is the part that really kind of uh, disturbed me just a little bit. It says, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. So the family structure, you know, like a mom, a dad, and kids. We disrupt that family structure, required by supporting each other as, ex as extended families and villages. We want to take care of one another. That's good, especially our children to the degree of mothers, parents, and children who are comfortable. Now, we foster a queer-affirming network. When we gather, this is it right here, we gather, we do so with the intention, this is when they gather, they gather with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking and rather than the belief that all the world are heterosexuals. So I'm like, what is, a, what is heteronormative? I ain't even know what that means. Honestly, I'm reading it like, that's why you got to research. So I looked up the definition. Heteronormative, relating to a worldview that promotes heterosexuality as normal, males liking females as normal. Their agenda, when they move as they stated, is to ensure that we fight against that is normal for males to like females. Now, you can't tell me that ain't twisted. You can't tell me that ain't messed up. And so it makes a lot more sense why all this other stuff is being pushed right now because that's their main agenda. However, packaged nicely. And so what we have to do as believers, and we're going to open up some scripture real quick because I got some real good scripture for this. What we have to do, you all, we have to open up our eyes and stop just jumping on bandwagons. And I ain't just talking about Black Lives Matter, yo. I'm talking about all of it. Cancel culture. I'm talking about all of it. Like, we just can't hop on bandwagons. Do the research. Does it align with the word of God? Because what we really need is truth. And a lot of times there's a thing called selective perception. And all it is is they show you one way and want you to see another way. And I got this graphic I want you all to see. How many is this? How many is this? This is confusing. Are there four beams or are there three beams right here? How many beams are up? How many of them are actually up right now? You let me know. How many? How many? How many? Four or three? It just depends how you look at the situation. Because if this guy is looking at it, he's like, clearly, one, two, three, four. This guy is seeing in his one, two, three. However, it both looks like truth, but what we have to do is not just look at our perspective. We need to get the other perspective. And what is the perspective that we need to get? We got to get God's perspective. We got to get kingdom perspective on situations. Some people put in three, some people put in four. It's hard to tell. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What's up, little newbie? 
Now, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this. This is what God said to his people. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways are your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. What God is saying right here is, we all have our own thinking, but God is saying, my thinking is greater than your thinking. And so a lot of times God is saying, don't look down, look up. Stop going down to get your thinking from the lowest common denominator and start getting it from the highest denominator, which is God. How is God looking at the situation? Because how he views it is right, because guess what? He created us. <laughs> like, he's the creator, the master, the ruler, the king of kings and lord and lords. So how he views it is how I want to view it, how you should want to view it the same thing. But we have to seek him in order to get that perspective. Oftentimes, we support something because they put it in front of us, and it is called deception. And Jesus actually talks about this. Matthew 24 is a very deep, deep, um, deep passage which Jesus started talking. And I want you all to check this out, right? Because I'm here to let you all know today that a deception is going to come to the world that is going to trick majority of the people. It is going to trick majority of the United States of America. That's what's going to happen. It's going to trick majority of people. However, we can't get caught up. And Jesus tells us how that we can stay aware, stay abreast, stay on top of these situations so that we don't get finessed. So we don't get finessed. Matthew 24, 3 through 4 says this. While Jesus was sitting on top of the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they say, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Pretty much they like, yo, Jesus, let us know when the world's going to end, bro. Tell me when the world's going to end and when you coming back because that's what I need to get hip on. I encourage you all to read this whole chapter by yourself. Read Matthew 24 by yourself, right? I'm going to just take out little bits and pieces right here. Verse 4, Jesus answered. This is what Jesus said about when the world's going to end. He said, see to it that no one finesses you, deceives you. He said, make sure no one finesses you, bro. Because there's going to be a lot of finesses out there. Don't get finessed. Verse 10, we're going to skip to verse 10. I really encourage you all to start reading this stuff on your own. At that time, many will fall away and will betray and hate one another. Oh, that sounds kind of familiar with what's going on today. And many false prophets will arise and mislead many. So that means... There's going to be people out there trying to deceive you. Then he said, there are going to even be false prophets that are going to try to mislead you. This is finessing on top of finessing right now. Verse 24, for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders that would deceive even the elect if that were possible. See, I have told you in advance. What he said is this. See, there are going to be a lot of people, and a lot of people that are going to have all these signs and wonders. They're going to look like they're going doing the right thing. They're going to have, I mean, they're going to look right. However, he says, it would even trick the real Christians if it was possible. But it ain't possible. Because if you connect it to the Spirit of God, he's going to tell you. If you're spending time with him in that word, he's going to lead you down the right path. He says, see, I've told you this in advance. I'm giving you the heads up. Yo, they coming to finesse, be aware. Yo, they coming, be aware. So that's why you got to stay vigilant. That's why you got to watch what media you intake. Yo, you got to watch who you watching on YouTube. Watch who you listening to. 
Watch that stuff because they all got a finesse to them. They all got their own agenda to them. Billie Eilish got her own agenda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ladies. I know y'all love her, but she got her own agenda. The baby got his own agenda. They got their own stuff, right? We just got to, we got to be aware. Psalms 119 tells us how we should be aware. Psalms 119, 103 through 105 says this. And this blessed me when I read it. I ain't going to lie. This, this, this made me happy. I like reading God's word, yo. That joint be making, ooh. It says, how sweet are your, are your words to my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. This is King David. You know the one, David and Goliath. You know the one, that one, the ratchet one as well. David said this, how sweet are your words, God, to my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, through your laws, through your ways, I get understanding. Therefore, mm, I hate every false way. How can you hate a false way if you don't know it's a false way? That's why I hate every type of deception that be out here trying to get y'all. I hate it because I know the truth. I know, and it's so clear to me. It is like crystal clear to me. However, it tricks a lot of people, and I can't even act like I was the same way, bruh. I was, bruh, bruh, I was conned for so many years. I couldn't see clear. I was blind for so many years, but it was only because of Jesus Christ, only because what he did on that cross, only because the blood that he played, and so I accepted that. I repented for how I was living, God transformed my life, opened up my eyes, now I can clearly see. Now I can clearly see what's right, what's wrong, which way I need to go down. Not only will he open up your eyes, but he'll change you from the inside. He's going to change you, so not only, do, you don't even want to do that stuff no more. Like, you still may have some urges, but the real person inside of you is saying, nah, bro, you know you really don't want that. You know you, that's, that ain't you, bruh. You know that ain't you no more. You know you ain't supposed to be doing, no, you know that porn is old for you. You know you tired of that. You know you tired of cutting yourself. You know that ain't you no more. You know you tired of these suicidal thoughts. You know that ain't you no more. And so that's why we got to spend time with the Father. Because he's going to change you from the inside out. Just like a caterpillar goes into that cocoon, spends time eating the leaves beforehand, the word of God goes into that cocoon, comes out like a butterfly. That's you. You a butterfly, but you acting like a caterpillar. You can fly, but yet you crawling everywhere. You ain't meant to crawl, young man. You're meant to fly. So fly. It says this. This is the next part that I like. Verse 105. I mean, yeah, 105. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. It says that the, if his word is a lamp, that means it's dark. And in this darkness and confusion and so much going on out here, he's saying that his word will give you a light to the right path. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Put up that pic because I think that just fits. Very clear for this. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. All this is saying is this. What you hear and what you listen to determines what path you're going to go down in life. That's it. It's very clear. So if God's word is in your ears and you're reading it, you're going to go down the right path. It may not seem like it. you just started a week ago. I ain't seeing nothing. That's not how life works. Life don't work just one week and everything changes, right? Um, it is a slow progression, but I promise you it's progress. I promise you if you start reading that word. Yo, Proverbs has 31 chapters. Why don't you read a chapter a day for every day of the month? Day number one, Proverbs one. Day number two, Proverbs two. Read that. Then read something in John. I'm telling you, you do that consistently, you're going to see change in your life. I, boy, I promise you. I promise you that. I promise you that. What your eyes see, what your ears hear, 
determined where you go. Pretty much it's like this. What your senses intake determines, determines the path that your feet outtake. What you take in determines the way you go out, point blank period. And there is a way that seems right to human beings. But the way, there's a way that seems right to man, but that way leads to death, is what Proverbs 14, 12 says. There's a way that seems right to human beings, but that way leads to death. What I'm here to tell you today is this. God's way is going to be the best way for you. Point blank, period. I am a witness of this. Yo, I ain't going to lie. I, I done tried it all. I done had the girls. I done had the drugs. I done had the money. I done had, like, the popularity, the fame. I was, you know, all of that. But yet I still feel empty. How come I still feel empty when I was going after everything that I thought I wanted? The clothes, nice whip. I, I mean, I was, I was feeling the playing on the basketball team, but yet I still felt empty. And you may still feel like that today. Why is it that I still feel empty? I'm going to church. I'm getting good grades. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But God never calls us just to go to church. He calls us to have a relationship with him so that we can be the church. This is a building. We are the church. So I'm here to tell you today that the opportunity is here for you. But you have to be real with yourself. And you just got to be, keep it 100 Yo, know, I ain't going to lie, I've been finessed. The enemy done got me. I've been finessed, God, and I need you to help me see things right. I need you to help me, Lord. I, I, I repent. I want to turn the other way from the path that I've been going, but I can only do it with your help. I can only do it through your spirit giving me power, grace, gracing me, giving me the ability to do what I'm supposed to do. You can't live this life like Christ without his spirit empowering you to do it. Point blank, period. Like, you can't willpower to look like Jesus? Man, please. Like, you can't muster up enough strength to, oh, I'm going to look like Jesus today. Well, you're going to fall on your face a billion times. Like, you, you always going to fall on your face. But when his spirit empowers you, now you can do it. Now you can go out and lay hands on the sick and they recover. Now you can go out and have power over that pornography spirit that's been having you entangled for years. And it can be broken in seconds. Now you can go out and say, you know what? I was once depressed and had anxiety, but guess what? My Jesus freed me from that. Now you can go out with power and authority because it's his spirit that's living through you. It ain't me. It's God's power living through me. And that's why we call it the plug, baby, because all you got to do is plug up to his power, and you're going to be able to do everything the power has for you. If you don't plug up, you'll never live how you're supposed to live. iPads die when they don't get plugged up. The battery lasts for a little bit, and you do good for a little bit on your own. You know what I'm talking about, cuz. You know what I'm talking about, shout. Like, you be the <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though. You do good for about a week or so. You do good. Oh yeah, I'm going. Oh yeah, I'm a. I mean, I'm. I'm doing good. I ain't had sex in a week, boy. Like you're doing good, strong. All of a sudden, hmm. How connected have you been to the Word? How connected have you been through prayer? And I ain't talking about no. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By our head. Man, forget them old cheap. Nah, let me stop. <laughs> it's good that you're praying at least. Like, I ain't going to flex. It's good that you're praying. But we got to, like, we got to get down on our knees. We got to get down on our face. We got to get down and cry before the Lord and spend time with him. We got to get down and get ugly before. I mean, oh, God, I need you. Like, you got to get ugly before the Lord sometimes. Like, you, you got, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to sometimes, like, forget all the cool stuff, forget all the cliche sayings, and get on your knees and pray before God. That's when you're going to see change. Doesn't happen first day, second day, but I promise, seeking you shall find Knock, and the door shall be open. I just want to pray.
in this time of prayer today. We're almost up on our time. God says this. He says, my word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And so what we need is that word because it said Jesus is the word that manifests in the flesh. And what we need is God's word to manifest so that we can live it out as well. But you can never do that if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can never do that if you don't stay connected. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on IG at theplug.ym and we'll see you next week.